And let me just talk from a scientific perspective. Uh, from a scientific perspective, if you're defining evolution as simply change, then evolution occurs all the time. All right. Uh, and this is part of the bait and switch that often happens with, in, in, in evolutionary, uh, when, when evolutionists are trying to convince you of evolution. They'll say, okay, we've been studying the finches on the Galapagos Islands for a long time. And we found that in long periods of drought, as a population, their beaks get shorter and stouter. And in periods, long periods of rain, as a population, their beaks get longer, generation by generation. All right? That means evolution occurs. Well, if you're defining evolution as simply species adapting to fit their environment, yeah, that occurs all of the time, right? And typically, you know, some scientists call that microevolution, which is variation within a genetic code. And others, macroevolution is variation outside a genetic code. But the point is, beaks changing size is something we completely understand. It's simply a result of certain alleles being expressed and making that, uh, that particular individual that had those alleles expressed more likely to survive so that they can pass that that, those alleles off to the offspring. That's completely understandable. There's no increase in information in the genetic code. No new organs are being formed. Nothing like that. All very understandable in terms of simple, simple Mendelian and some, a little bit of post-Mendelian genetics. When you make those finch turn into eagles, that's where we have a problem. You know, because now we're talking about a change in the, in the you know, structure of the genetic code, adding information. And that's where science seems to say we can't go. So from one extent, the, you know, the simple definition of evolution, yeah, it's happening all the time. And, you know, the cats that I love so much, Abyssinian cats, are the result of microevolution. They've been bred to be really friendly cats, you know. So that kind of stuff happens. Well, I think they have to because I think it's, it's almost impossible. It's hard to d develop any kind of scientific framework in which micro microevolution doesn't happen because it's just so well documented. I can do it artificially by breeding. I can watch it happen on the Galapagos. You know, uh, even the sparrows in North America, big study done on those to show uh, microevolution within sparrow populations. So, you know, I think those are, th that's pretty well documented. So in typical creationist philosophy that exists right now, God created some archetypal creatures, which he calls kinds. And then microevolution calls those kinds to develop into specific species. You know? So God maybe created one kind of wolf, you know, and it, it microevolved into all these different kinds of wolves and eventually domesticated dogs and all of that. But maybe there was only one or two kinds of wolves initially created. And the genetic codes they had had all the information necessary to create the diversity that we see today. Well, I think it is really pretty much time to go anyway. You guys have been very patient sitting here for three hours. Uh, so I think he has something to say. I will be around for a little while if you want to come and talk to me individually. <laughs>